So, Raj, we know about John Fisher that he doesn't talk often, hasn't discussed this topic for years at last check. Why today? Why all of a sudden did he come out and talk to you in this interview setting? I've been trying to talk to John Fisher since 2005. So what is that, 18 years? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, an interview request uh, years in the making, almost uh, two decades now. Why today? It's interesting. I spoke with him a couple of weeks ago for the first time. I'd never met the guy, uh, never said more than, I don't know, a few words to him. I meet him for the first time a few weeks ago. And he says his part of the story off the record. And I said, you know what? I don't think you're going to make any friends or there's no magic wand here to change the climate in the Bay Area and how people feel about you. But you should say this on the record. And that was the last. That's the last thing I heard. And then all of a sudden, a couple of days ago, I get a call from his people. Hey, John, would like to sit down with you. So I don't quite know exactly what flipped the switch for him, uh, but it happened. I'm glad it did. I'm glad uh, we finally just have some answers, Brody, some right. clarity with us. Well, and you say on the record, which is great that you were able to quote him, but this is 2023 and we're TV people. Um, no cameras. Uh, I guess there, it was recorded, right, for, for transcription purposes. Is that correct? Yeah. So I said, uh, well, he requested, um, I don't want any cameras or audio because I said, oh, we can do a podcast. He goes, no, just old fashioned Q&A. Um, okay. And I said, fine, and th that's OK. I'm a TV guy. I can obviously write right. it out. I can do the transcript. So that was by his request. Um, I did ask him why. And he said, you know, I'm just a private guy. Um, I'm not uh, uh, one of those owners that are out there, you know, like a Mark Cuban or Jerry Jones. And I, I want it just to be straight factual record as opposed to any sort of misinterpretation. So I took it at what it, what it was. One more context question then. How long did the interview go? And, and was it a comfortable setting? What, what was the visual that we, we won't be able to see? Um, well, you will be able to see it. We'll, we'll run some of the story here uh, on, on NBC tonight. Um, at, one of his, at his uh, Peninsula home, in his living room, one hour. They said he got one hour with him, which okay. is plenty. Um, on a couch, you know, it was a sunny day today. It, it was fine. And you know <laughs> what stands out to me is here, I don't know how you feel about this, but here I thought this is going to be, you know, kind of a brooding, cagey right. uh, guy that's, you know, kind of this reclusive billionaire, a narrative that, that we've all done for him. Um, turns out to be, and, you know, in my limited time with him, he's actually very candid, very upfront, self-deprecating, and pretty genuine. Now, when we you know, go through the transcript, everyone can decide for themselves. But I was surprised. I had low expectations, uh, and it turned out to be a guy that, uh, that was pretty upfront. So what is the biggest takeaway for you, the biggest headline, the most important thing he said, if we can just start there? Um, I said, uh, among the things, for, actually, the first question I said, I said, I've chatted with every Bay Area sports owner in the last 25 years, except for you. What's the deal? Why the privacy? We're not that powerful. We're going we're gonna to ruin you. And he said, look, I'm just private. I don't like to be out there. And then right away I said, is this the job for you to be an owner? I mean, there's other things you can do. You got plenty of money. You don't need this. And he goes, look, I'm a baseball fan, which I didn't know that. I didn't know how much of a fan he was. He says he goes to a lot of games, not this season. Uh, right. but he says, I'm a huge baseball fan. It's in my DNA. My uncle owned a minor league team. Uh, the Fisher family was a big owner of the Giants for many years before they moved to, or they're planning to move to Tampa Bay. So he said, I'm a baseball fan. I want to win. Um, and that's why I own this team. And of course, I said, why wouldn't you sell this team? Get rid of all these headaches. You have plenty of money. And he said, I want to win. And this is what I do. Baseball's in my DNA. The best, the best path for me to win is to get a ballpark and be able to spend some money. And that's how we can win. This is John Fisher telling me. I saw him make a claim because today he also had an article, a Q&A come out with the Las Vegas Review Journal. They also posted a commentary piece that he penned in their newspaper today, in their publication. Part of it is that he said the A's will lose $40 million this year. I'm not, I'm not sure if budget or talks of this year or finances came up or, or reasons why the A's are interested in moving came up. Were you able to at least get some clarity on some of the claims that he had made previously? Of course. Uh, one of the biggest parts of our conversation was the money, right? Yeah. And I said, you know, wh why go to Las Vegas, point blank? He said, pretty bluntly, and seemingly pretty genuinely said, look, the deal that was close to being had in Oakland, uh, we weren't comfortable with. And we can get into the minutia here of who said what and the city council and various mayors. But uh, the, the most recent deal um, said, you know, he said the city council had promised to take care of infrastructure, but there was no money behind that promise. This is according to John Fisher. And therefore, the 
clock was ticking, and you know this, Brody, the collective bargaining agreement, he had to have a binding agreement in place by January of next year, so a few months from now. If he right. didn't, he wouldn't get the revenue sharing. So yeah, this is a money play. He needs that revenue sharing. He needs that ballpark, according to John Fisher, and that's how he can win. And this I appreciated as a lifelong A's fan. Um, he said, and I said, your DNA as an owner is not to spend money on splashy free agents. Is that going to change in Las Vegas? Uh, and he said, with the new ballpark, with the revenue, we'll be able to keep all these great players that we see around the league that started in Oakland. We'll finally be able to keep those players, retain those players. And again, people will be able to read his quotes. You were there to see his body language. And to your point earlier, there's a lot of we said, they said type situations here between the A's in the city of Oakland or the A's and their future payroll and spending that they hadn't done in the past versus what they may or may not be able to do in the future with Las Vegas. And maybe this isn't a fair question to pose to you, but why should we believe what was said today? Because the track record in the past maybe doesn't lead you to believe anything here and now. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly curious to see. I asked a lot of questions, pointed questions, direct questions. He gave me some very candid and genuine responses. We will see. We, we don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Uh, I'm very curious to see in five years from now or whatever, how many years from now, that they're able to keep these great players that we see, former A's that are on the Braves now and the Blue Jays and all these various teams. Right. I don't know those answers. And it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see. What did he say about the sell shirts, the sell the team chance, the reverse boycott, the reverse boycotts, I should say, yeah. plural? I mean, there is so much of a fan movement. And although he's isolated in a sense of doesn't talk much, he must consume all of this that goes on. Yeah. So I'm trying to find my verbatim here, the transcript. Sure. Uh, yes, I'm hurt. Yes, I'm hurt when I see those sell the team chance, sell shirts. Uh, but then he said, it's a bit of irony here. Um, it shows and proves to me the passion of the fan base. So he sees everything that you say and I say and the media yeah. says and what the fans say. Um, ultimately, though, my takeaway was he, he's not selling the team. I also asked, is there a situation, a scenario where once that stadium is built in Las Vegas, you would then sell the team? He said no. He's mm -hmm. co-investing. The primary investors are he and his two brothers and his family. Uh, he said he will get some local ownership in Las Vegas just to keep it local. Uh, but he has no plans to sell now, no plans to sell when that stadium is built. And he hears the fans and is hurt by what's happening and said, you know what? It's hard for me to make this move uh, because this is an area where I grew up. It's very painful to do it. But the best path forward for him uh, is that new ballpark and the revenue sharing. Well, it does sound like he, in, in part, does need to sell bits of the team. I know Goldman Sachs is going to be part of the financing package, and to do that, I believe they're supposed to get, reportedly, a certain share of the team. He also has mentioned today that his family will get involved in helping him pay for this. Yeah, he said that point Did blank. Did he talk then, about that? Yeah, he said yeah. point blank, my brothers and I, my family, are going to be the primary yeah. investors. In terms of, uh, and he did bring up the Giants as an example, because he used to be a co-owner of the Giants, as you probably know. Yep. Um, in terms of, uh, so he said, you know, we want to do something similar to the Giants, where we have a chunk of the core owners, but also open it up for some local investors. So, um, that's what he's saying. Uh, I've learned a long time ago to never really trust or digest any financials from baseball owners or even football owners because they can skew right. the numbers however they want. It's not public record. It's not open. They can say he made $40 million or lost $40 million. Right. We, will, we will never know. <clears throat> well, to that point earlier, uh, we say, they say. I mean, losing $40 million, knowing what we know, they have the lowest payroll in baseball. Their, their rent is only a million dollars a year. We know their TV revenue money. We know their... Revenue sharing money that they get from baseball to the outsider, it doesn't add up. So that was my point earlier in saying how should we instantly just take everything he says and believe it's the entire truth or not bent or stretched in any way. A couple yeah, more things. I, I, I don't think you're Go supposed ahead. to. I think he, it, this was his opportunity that he chose to do a Las Vegas outlet, a Bay Area outlet, and then right. I believe uh, he's gonna, we'll be speaking with ESPN um, just to get his side of the story out there. I have no problems with that. In fact, I, I would suggest if I were to talk to him on the side privately, get Get your story out there. Get your narrative. Right. It's it's up to everyone else. If you want to believe what he right. says, go for it. That's awesome. If you think he's you know a, a total chump, you don't want to believe it. That's okay too. At least get your narrative out there.
Well, and so you say get your narrative out there, and this leads me to one of my last questions. The the vote, right? Major League Baseball, at some point before January, most likely, is going to have an owner's vote. 75% yes to approve this relocation application, which he says now the A's have, I guess, completed? They, they've fully submitted? He I know at, at one point it was... He says he's officially submitted the application, submitted it. Okay. and they are now waiting that vote. That vote could happen as early as next month, but we will right. see. So he did this in part today. Was it was it a little bit to show the other owners that at some point I, I didn't totally evade the media, I didn't totally um, uh, avoid questions? Was was today, maybe, the ability to get his story out there, but also to kind of check that box and make the um, make the presentation look better to the other owners around the league? I think that's probably part of it. Um, I think he also said, and I think, I know he also said in our interview this afternoon that um, that you know, he's made some mistakes, uh, excuse me, not mistakes, he's made some missteps, and one of the things that he's learned moving forward that perhaps he will open up a little more to the media. He said, you know, I've really stood behind, allowed Billy Bean to do the work, David Force to do the work, Dave Cavill, and I've kind of just been in the background. Uh, now, perhaps, based on today and moving forward in Las Vegas or whatever that may be, that he'll start to be more out there. All right, last thing here. He said he uh, takes responsibility for this. Like, it's, it's on me. But at that same at that same point, if there's no justification for the responsibility, if there's no penalty for the responsibility, does it does it mean anything? Uh, if there's no recourse, if there's no for sure expansion team that's coming to Oakland with Major League Baseball, what is taking the responsibility if ultimately uh, it comes at no cost? I don't know if there should be a cost for owners. I mean, I was my heart was ripped out when the Raiders left. They just left. When the Warriors left Oakland, my heart was ripped out. I know, obviously, they stay in the same market. So yeah. I'm, I'm a little more cynical, not just with John Fisher, the A's, the Raiders, Warriors, but all of pro sports, people just leaving. Um, it, it's, it's, it, I question my fandom a lot uh, when it comes to pro sports, but at the end of the day, we all come back and watch those games. All right, last thing here. After, after seeing what happened today and the interviews he's done and one more he's going to do, What's your gut feeling on this? It, it, it seems like everybody's talking about him included, Oakland now in the past tense. Um, does that instantly mean that Las Vegas, like he feels confident in the owner's vote? He feels confident in the process? How does he feel about this potential? I don't know what he's thinking in his mind, but yes, he feels confident that they will get the votes necessary uh, and officially close that gap and, and move to Las Vegas. All right. Raj, appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing this. Of course, Brody. Thank you.